All right, today I have the Cisco Access Point 571. This is the uh, the latest from Cisco for their small business pro line of uh, products. Uh, PoE uh, injector for this switch, uh, if not switch, uh, access point. Um, so I haven't used this at a client site yet. Uh, this will be the first time, but I've used the uh, previous products, the uh, the 561, I believe, and all the 300 series access points from them. Uh, they seem to work well enough for the clients I deal with, which is the uh, five-person office to 20-person office, so and everything in between seems to work really well. Um, I try to only install one access point in, in an office just because it's easier to manage and uh, and if you buy the proper one for that for those kinds of offices it, it works really well. It doesn't work for everything but it, it works for most of the clients I deal with. So I, I try to keep it simple. Everything I do, if there's a simple way and if there's a hard way, I go for the simple way. Not just installing but managing so it's a lot easier to manage one access point than it is to manage two or three or two different vendor types or three different vendor types just try if you're going to install access point install from one vendor whether it's cisco or a different one when you have issues they're a lot easier to solve so let's uh, let's open this up i've opened this up before but uh, i repackaged it and uh, without the plastic it, it pretty much looks the same so uh, you're not going to get a hundred percent unboxing experience, but uh, I, I needed to test a few things. So this is how it looks. So you get the uh, Ethernet cable. Let's put that aside. Uh, mounting screws. And the unit itself. And the uh, the back panel basically. All right. So it does come with uh, some documentation. It's uh, here we go. So support, uh, quick started guide. The only thing useful in here is the uh, login information and it's the username is Cisco, the password is Cisco and uh, the default uh, login IP address if you don't have a DHCP network this device will automatically assign itself a IP address of 192.168.1.245 so most likely you'll be plugging this into um, a network that does have DHCP so you might take a look at your DHCP uh, listing to find out what IP address it has grabbed but otherwise if you want to use it uh, the default one don't plug it into a DHCP network and that's the address it'll have so you can connect directly to that IP address so let's put this aside for now so let's start with this so this is the uh, the mounting uh, bracket that basically goes on the wall or ceiling. This is very nice for setting up these access points because oftentimes um, what ends up happening with some other devices, they, they have the small mounting screw holes right about here and um, even though they come with a guide card to help you uh, install the uh, the screws that this is going to be mounting on, it's, it's always a pain. It's 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 much easier uh, when they do come with something like this so you mount this on the wall and then you mount the uh, the uh, access point to this and it just uh, snaps into place so normally when it's uh, on the wall it just snaps into place and to remove it you just pull this up and it's easily removable so if you need to manage or maintain these and they do fail it's a lot easier to remove it without damaging. Usually with the uh, two screw holes you end up you know kind of moving it aside back and forth and you end up damaging the plastic in those areas. With this it, it still looks fine uh, no matter how many times you 
you remove it. Uh, you might get some scratches here, but otherwise you're not damaging the unit. Uh, so let's get let's get started with the the unit itself. So like I said, I've installed the uh, the previous model, um, which looked a little nicer. This this does, doesn't look bad at all. Uh, so this has the the Cisco logo. So your client can be reassured you, you're buying you at least decent quality. Um, the uh, the sides here have a, a good amount of uh, vent holes because it's probably has no fan in it so this is the only way that the uh, the heat will escape uh, there's also a big reset button it looks like you can just use a regular pen to reset it you don't have to use uh, a paper clip other side also um, bottom top actually this is the bottom so this comes with two um, ethernet ports um, so the uh, the data and the uh, PoE source uh, will plug into this and you can plug in um, another device uh, so this is similar to uh, uh, a PoE phone uh, or just a regular IP phone basically with two ports where you plug the phone into the wall first and then um, at the back of the phone you could plug in a computer and that way you can use a shared uh, one uh, one cable and uh, basically provide access to two devices so I don't know exactly what you would plug into the uh, second port what uses there is but there might be a general use case out there I'm not familiar with uh, I'm good with just one but in, in case there ever is a need um, you could uh, branch off this unit so that's what it's for it's a two port switch and um, there's a little activity light here so I don't see uh, I don't see any buttons or anything you can press on this to basically uh, connect to the wireless access point. So there's no feature to easily access. Usually there's a on the consumer and routers and access points. There's a little button you can press and uh, it'll basically uh, allow you to connect with a, a preset key. Um, without knowing the actual passphrase so it doesn't look like this has it uh, so you wouldn't use this in an environment like that so you, this is strictly uh, uh, a business access point so it does not have that feature if, you, if you're going to rely on that feature look at a different model this also can only be powered by uh, a PoE switch or a PoE injector <laughs> and so this is what this is for right here so this just looks like a regular AC brick, but let's uh, take this out. But what this allows you to you do if you do not have a PoE switch is you plug in your uh, power source. So this plugs into the wall this end. And on this end, uh, you will plug in your... Okay, so the cable that goes into your access point will plug in here, and the other end will plug in here. Um, so this is labeled here, uh, Ethernet 0 PD, probably for power distribution. Um, so with the earlier models, they actually had a port where you could plug in a reg regular AC adapter. So right now with this unit, you know, you're limited to either a PoE injector or a PoE switch. One thing to note about using a PoE switch, uh, for a lot of devices, the re power requirements aren't that high. But for these access points, uh, I believe the, uh, the, um, the PoE swi switch needs to support AF, which is a uh, full power. Uh, so this is, I think, how many watts is this? I think it's. Uh, so this is a 30 watt uh, AC adapter. I'm not sure if the uh, unit itself needs 30 watts. Uh, I can't see from the back, but it's probably in the. Uh, okay, so the PoE 802.3. 
E A T or A F. So if, uh, so if it says 55 volts DC, 0.6 A amps. Okay. Anyway, so you have to make sure that the, your switch can support the full power that this uh, unit requires. I think with the previous model, if you use uh, a POE switch that doesn't provide enough power, you can actually log in and it'll give you a warning that uh, the power source is not sufficient to power both radios, so it, can, it will only power one. I don't know about this model, but I know with the, uh, the previous models there will be a warning if you try to use a POE switch that doesn't provide enough power, so you, you do get to be notified if what you're trying to do will not work. If it doesn't power it up at all, let's just power this so you can actually see how it looks. So you can see on the AC adapter that uh, the little green light goes on. And the little green light is flashing here, so it tells us it's uh, it's booting up, and we have a power source. And if we look in the back, we can see that the Ethernet uh, port is flashing, so it's telling us there's some activity. All right, so I believe at some point it should uh, turn uh, turn solid green. But uh, let's talk about uh, some of the other access points that I've used in the past. So, like I said, you have to use something, if you're going to use it in an open area where clients or customers come in, that fits into the office and looks nice. So, this is, this is something that Cisco released many years ago. Uh, it's an ugly gray and green box. So those are Cisco colors, but um, you don't want to see them on an access point. Uh, so, ugly box with three big antennas. Um, so this has the uh, mounting holes I was talking about. So it's it's generally a, it's not impossible to mount these, but it's a little time consuming. So you can see scratches trying to get get the get the screws to properly get in there and uh, and position this. So it's a lot easier um, that Cisco provides. Where is it? provides this uh, really handy uh, I wish that uh, more manufacturers of all all kinds of products would use this format for mounting things instead of the uh, the two holes in the back of the unit so whatever it is a small business router access point it really doesn't matter if it's if you don't have a rack or a server cabinet and it's not going to go in a one U, you know environment then you know you're probably going to mount it up on a wall or a ceiling and it's nice to have something like this as opposed to trying to screw with the, uh, the two back screws here so in my opinion it, that this is a good design so I like how it's uh, how it looks so let's just go over some of the things so it does require PoE so either through injector or PoE switch it supports 2.4 and 5 gig uh, radio frequencies. Uh, so you use the 2.4 for most of your devices, legacy devices. 2.4 will work with everything. With newer devices, the 5 gig frequency will work. Uh, so you'll get much better performance out of that. You won't get the best range, but for devices that support it, you can use the 5 gig radio. So this unit can support both the 2.4 and 5 gig radio at the same time. So it also supports the AC protocol, which um, supports multiple in, multiple out. So we, you're getting even more performance with the devices that support that. Now one thing to say about wireless. Um, wireless is hard. It, it, it does, it's not a... A hard thing to mount this it's not a hard thing to configure but it is a hard thing to get these working in 
a concentrated area where you have a lot of access points interfering with each other. So in a, in a downtown area in a, or in a residential area where there's a lot of access points, if you have conflicting frequencies, then things are not going to work. So th the best thing to do is just uh, if you can afford to get a good quality access point, that's just an access point. Uh, I don't recommend the all-in-one units. Uh, generally, they're they're meant for really small setups. I wouldn't even recommend them for any business setup at all. Uh, so unless you know your entire office and people working it is in a small room, uh, you're better off getting a dedicated access point. Um, and if you're uh, someone working from home and you're really using the wireless network a lot then you're still better off with a, a wireless access point a dedicated one now they sell some of these gaming routers with the AC wireless and they, they got like a million antennas and uh, they some crazy specs but when you actually use those or try to use them uh, in a business environment they just simply don't work. Once once you have a few users on those things, they're they're not worth the money you're paying for. You're better off investing in a lesser price uh, access point from Cisco, and it'll work better in a business environment than some of these gaming uh, wireless routers uh, that have like all these fancy antennas. Uh, those are generally tested in a lab, and they basically provide the best elements to get whatever performance numbers they're looking for but they're not really tested in business environments and they generally do a poor job uh, so always go with uh, a dedicated access point Let's see the other thing to keep in mind is uh, what wireless it is for and uh, you want to use wireless for things like uh, web and email uh, and you want to do this by using your notebooks and your smartphones. Uh, you do not want to use this to access your database applications, your SQL data, uh, anything that generally requires a lot of back and forth. And the reason is wireless will disconnect. Uh, in some cases, it will disconnect and connect really quickly. You won't notice it. But with those applications, it can cause some corruption. So if you're using things like uh, Sage uh, Accounting, um, QuickBooks, uh, any kind of SQL database, uh, any kind of uh, database application, um, things like PC Law or generally any kind of uh, industry application where uh, whether it's a hair salon or a clinic or anything that requires back and forth communication with some kind of server. So these things will work, but they will occasionally lose a connection. And there's a good chance of you corrupting data when this is happening. So the, uh, the application vendors usually have some kind of requirement that you use this on a wired network. Most people don't, don't read up on it, but... Uh, Check the requirements. Most of these applications uh, shouldn't be used in a wireless environment. You, you might uh, use it for a short amount of time if you really have no other way of accessing that application. But generally, the, uh, the requirements are for a wired network. So the best thing you can do for your wireless network is if you do have any users that really require a lot of data, whether it's uh, streaming or large file uploads, the best thing you can do for your wireless network is to offload a lot of that to a wired connection. So if you have one user that's basically tying up your wireless network, move them onto a wired connection. It, all your wireless users will, will benefit from that. Uh, if you have no other choice, then you know that's, that's just what happens when you saturate a wireless network with a lot of data. It, it'll slow down and you'll, you'll notice that um, so again, uh, this is great for uh, a small setup, even though I think the specs say you could have up to 200 users, I wouldn't use this beyond a, a 20 user office and 
and maintain that high performance you, you probably want to expect. So uh, this is, uh, I think, priced at around um, 380 uh, Canadian, but it's probably around closer to 300 American now. So it's it's a it's a decent price for a small business to pay for good access point. So let's just uh, leave it at that and uh, and see how this works at the uh, client side. Maybe I'll do an update video with the uh, the results of that.